This definitely feels like one of my older style videos where I've got my ring light on because if I didn't have the ring light on I'll just show you. It's very dark. <laughs> so with the help of my ring light we are going to sit down and I'm going to share with you some of my budget and tips that I use every single month. I won't be sharing anything personal, but the little bits and bobs that I spend out, I'm more than happy to share. I use Google Spreadsheets for paying the bills for our house and stuff like that. But when it comes to me and my own personal budget for things that I like, I just use a monthly budget planner just like this. I got this from Amazon and you can just date it to whatever date you want. It's not specifically dated in any way. It's just a budget planner that you can, you know, use as and when you wish, whatever year. And that works perfect for me. I also use budget wallets. I get asked about these all the time since I shared them in lockdown. I think it was 2020. I have emptied this one. So we'll go with this one. I'll just pop that piece of paper there and I'll leave I'll pop that piece of paper there and then it should be empty apart from just a few little notes that I'll, I'll leave in there because I need oh we're not empty <laughs> we've got 20 pounds in one in one wallet so I use these and I shared it in 2020 when I was you know speaking about saving and budgeting and stuff like that and I've been asked so many times to create a budget video so I thought we'll sit down and do it I'll go through my finances of things that I spend out on but no household bills obviously Lee and I do that together we are a three income household that is myself my partner Lee and our son Lee as well and we all contribute to the house so I will use my own money for budget and purposes to show you how I do it and hopefully just give you a little bit of inspiration when it comes to budgeting your finances and how to save a little bit better. But, but the most important thing is about getting our finances straight so that when we come into 2023, it will be a very prosperous 2023. That's what I'm aiming for anyway. And I feel like budget planning and getting your finances in order now, it's the end of the month, it's the perfect time to do it because our wages have landed in the bank and we can sort our finances out. So I'm going to give you some of my top tips. The first time ever I have notes in my phone because I didn't want to forget anything and I never do anything like this, but I thought there may just be some things that I forget. So I've got some notes. So if you see me looking away, it's just to make sure I don't forget anything at all. When you sit down to work your finances out, it's important that you're honest. You have to sit there and go through every single bill that you have to pay first and have your priority list. So your priority list would be mortgage, rent, car insurance, home insurance, whatever you prioritise make sure they're top of your list and then work your way down your budget out of your monthly if you earn weekly wages you can do the same you're just gonna have to break it down into four portions so i'm paid monthly with my wages so it's perfect for me to just sit down with my budget planner and work out my finances i have a spending tracker so it tracks what i spend and it's very important to be just as honest with your spending tracker as you are with your budget planning. So, you know, we all like to think, well, we don't have to put that down. That was only £5 or £4. Everything has to go into your spending tracker. It's the only way that you can keep an eye on your finances and make sure that you're not overspending or taking from one part of the budget for another part of the budget. The first and only tip that I can give you when it comes to your money is don't use your bank card don't do it it's the, it's a mistake that you'll make and we can all overspend we can end up in home bargains or b m or you know wherever it is you go to do your shopping and end up putting unnecessary things in your trolley and i'm guilty of it i do it <laughs> they're so clever these shops and we need to be one step ahead if you write a list and keep your list in your notes in your phone. If you've been following any of my daily vlogs throughout Vlogtober or just before Vlogtober when I started weekly vlogging, you will have noticed I'll say, I'm just nipping to Sainsbury's or I'm just nipping to Home Bargains and I go straight to the notes in my phone and I just tick everything off as I get it. It's very easy to do and it helps you to stay focused when you're in store to just stick to what you need. 
what works even better is to, to only have the cash in your pocket. So if you're going in for four things and those four things amount to £10, sometimes I'll put a little bit of a buffer in and I'll say I'll take 15 just in case I see something in store that I might be running low on like toilet roll or tin foil, whatever it may be. I'll always take a little small buffer, but that buffer can only be used for items that I'm about to run out of or I've forgotten to add onto the list. It's not, oh, I like that Christmas decoration or, oh, I like the smell of that bubble bath. Because if you really don't need it, we don't need to stockpile things. We really don't. And I think since lockdown, quite a lot of us, me included, have become guilty of stockpiling. And it's so unnecessary. We don't need to do it. I found myself stockpiling feminine things like deodorant, bubble bath, shower gel, you know, all the things that I didn't need to stockpile. I can just order them online with a food order or I can go to the shops and just buy them from Home Bargains and B&M. So have cash and stick to your list. It's important because it, you will be amazed at the money that you save through doing that. When my wages land in the bank, I, I've just mentioned before, I use Google Spreadsheets to monitor my finances and see exactly how much I have outgoing and exactly how much I've got left. So let's just say for argument's sake, I have, let's see, where are we? We are in October budget plan. At the end of the month, my wages have dropped in the bank. I have used Google Spreadsheets to weigh out my finances of exactly how much needs to be left in my account and how much is left for me to sort my own personal bills, debts, budget, whatever out. So let's say I was left with £800. Out of £800 income over four days or three days, depending on how much your bank allows you to draw out, I will draw that £800 out of the bank because if I leave it in the bank, you are guaranteed I will overspend. It's just a thing that I have learned, especially before lockdown, I'd say around 2018, I started really watching how I was spending my money and I can be quite, what's the word, frivol? I don't know. I can be a little bit wild when I go into the shops wanting to spend on my cards and then forgetting what I've spent. And I spoke about it in the video and said you would be amazed how much you spend over the week. It was like Marks and Spencers, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's, B&M, Home Bargains, because I was shopping on my cards. And it's honestly so damaging to your finances to do it that way. So over the three or four days, I will draw that £800 cash out and that's where the money wallets come in. So what I keep inside my money wallets is I just put stickers on the front. I've got a little cricket joy. I've had it for maybe a, a couple of years and I just printed the little stickers off to stick on the front. It, it works perfectly for me. I have car, so any car maintenance, MOT, road tax, new tyres, you know, anything that you could need for your car goes into that one. So in my car wallet, I usually put, where's my list? Because I've got a list of exactly how much I put into each wallet. So my car wallet gets £30 out of the £800. Gifts for Christmas, birthday presents, you know, new babies, anything like that. I put in monthly £60 and the reason why I put £60 into that wallet is because we've got Christmas coming too. So usually I will put 30 but as soon as we get to September, which is generally when I start saving for Christmas and buying Christmas presents, I'll up that budget to £60. So I put £60 into my Christmas gifts. It's gifts, birthday gifts. Savings is the next wallet. Yep. On my savings, I put £100 in deposit deposit was for our new house when we moved so i haven't been contributing to the deposit because we decided not to sell but i did used to put 300 pounds a month into my deposit for the house but that's not happening right now so i'll skip that one the next one is healthcare, which is dentist or you know anything that i may need to do with my health and into my healthcare, i put 10 pounds a month and I think I've actually got about £80 in that. So it must mean I'm due a scale and polish at the dentist. File is maintenance, is it? Yeah, maintenance. And I've got stroke emergency on my little slip of paper, which I keep all the finances on. So maintenance and emergency. I have £50 a month going into this wallet. And that is just in case 
anything needs fixing. I mean, it could be there's something faulty on the car or anything. It's just maintenance stroke emergency. So I just use that for anything that I think falls under maintenance or emergency. I generally use it for the window cleaner as well. <laughs> And I put £50 a month into that. The next one is personal. And personal is my accountant. So I have an accountant to sort out all my finances for me at the end of the year. And I put £30 a month into that because he costs me £400 a year to sort my account out. So personal is for me. So personal is for my accountant. And £30 goes into that wallet. Next one is Vet and Groom. So it's down as pets. <laughs> it was exhausted by our peg, as I've already said. But I put £50 a month into this. And the reason why I put £50 a month into this is because you will be blown away at the cost of having a pet. So we have pet food. My dogs eat a, a dry diet with Royal Cannon and they get groomed. Peg goes four weekly to have her nails done. That costs me 15 pounds. That's why I don't have my nails done because I can't afford to do mine and Peg's. <laughs> so obviously Peg's gonna have her nails done. But I was working this out when I was sorting my finances out. Dogs cost per month for us to look after them, groom them, do the nails, feed them, insure them. It costs a whopping 195 pounds a month goes into our pet file. <laughs> £195 a month. Even I don't get that budget. But £195 a month goes into our groom. But that is on my Google spreadsheets also. So the reason why I have an extra budget is just to put my mind at ease in case anything was to ever happen to the pooches. I put £50 a month away and it really does mount up. When Peg went to have her teeth done, it cost, it was nearly £800 for Peg to have her teeth out and a scale and polish. If only it was that cheap for, if only it was the same price for dogs as it was for humans to have an extraction and a scale and polish, but it's not. Pets are very expensive, so I do put £50 a month away myself to make sure that they will always have everything that they need. It's my most important budget is to make sure that the dogs are okay the next one is housing and that is anything to do with house decor or anything like that and my budget for that is 30 pounds a month i've just dropped my pen and it's gone all fuzzy it's one of them little fine nib ones the next one is my miscellaneous and i basically got a question mark and any so i put any amount into miscellaneous when there's a question mark like that it just means when i've tallied up the amount of my budget out of my £800, what I've got left, I'll then decide what I put into miscellaneous. And then the back envelope is income. And this is anything to do with YouTube or uh, sponsorships and any affiliate links, if I've used any affiliate links. So there's currently £20 in there. I didn't even know there was £20 in there. And then I've got one spare wallet. So that's basically my budget plan. And let me just put that piece of paper back in because I like to keep that with my budget wallet. Right, that's my budget one. I won't go through this one because this is a personal one. This is our household bills and it just wouldn't feel right sharing those. So I won't share them. I'll leave them there because obviously it's mine, Lee's and Lee's also. So I'm just going to do mine. The next bills I pay out are, you have to be honest, and this is what I said to you, you have to be extremely honest when you're writing this out because this will really tell you how much you've got left. That is disposable income that you can use to, you know, save or do whatever you want to do. So the first thing that I pay is £10 for Canva. And this is all of the things that I do with regards to YouTube. So I pay £10 for Canva. I pay £26 for editing apps. I pay £10 for the music that I use on the YouTube videos, which is Epidemic Sounds. I use Netflix, which I think is £17.99 because it went up, but I'm not 100%. Then I have my Amazon subscription, which is for vitamins or anything that I have on a rolling subscription from Amazon, and that is £27.93. And then I have Amazon Prime, which 
I know it's not £10, it's actually gone up. So I'll put £11 because I think it went up by a pound, but I'm not 100%. I also have Amazon Music, which is £4.99 through Alexa. Then I have my phone, which is £21.86 for my contract. I have my car insurance, which is £59.58. Now, I wasn't really going to speak about this, but I need to put it in because you'll be like, what's the £19.60 per month? So I do use CBD for the perimenopause and it costs me £19.60 per month. I broke the price down because each bottle lasts around maybe two months, a little over two months sometimes. So I'll put that down, £19.60. And then I have Samsung Appliance Care, which is £1.61. And that is for my Samsung vacuum cleaner. I insured it. Then we move over to debt and any debt that you might have. And I currently have a credit card debt which is £180.97 with Barclays. So I, w I will pay that off in full as soon as I have sold the stock. So I used the credit card to start the business of Tony Interior to buy the stock. And as soon as the, that money comes back in, I will pay that bill off. But if the money hasn't come in, by the time the bill comes in for my credit card, I would take it out of my savings to pay the, pay the credit card off because I obviously don't want to pay any interest. So I have £180.97 with a Barclays credit card. I currently don't take anything at all out of my Tony Interior business, the website online. I don't take anything out of that. I'm trying to build it up and any money that is made from Tony Interior, I'll put it straight back in to buy more stock to be able to have more items available. There is no money at all that can be touched in Tony Interior until it's paid its debt and they will be reoccurred and I should imagine over a few months because it's only just starting out. So that's the end of my budget. So out of an £800 budget, I will pay out on my own personal bills £505.06. That's without the Barclay card credit card bill. Now with the credit card bill on, it's 686 pound three pence. And the chances are that Barclay card bill is due. So I'm gonna leave it on because it's gonna need paying. And all of that money hasn't come in yet. So I will take that out of my savings, clear that bill, and then just take that back what I've taken out. I'll put it onto my Google spreadsheets. I'm just using the book more so so that I can give you an idea. Out of £800, I will be left with £113.97. That's mine, what I'm left with for one month, £113.97. Now, if you're anything like me, <laughs> you can spend that pretty quickly across Home Bargains, B&M stores, and any other little shops that you may nip into over a fortnight. I can easily spend that. And it doesn't leave me much room when it comes to, you know, maybe needing something new or, you know, seeing a nice jumper or anything like that. Now, with that £113.97, I'm going to challenge myself this month to not, not, do a no spend month because I don't believe it's fair to put that type of pressure on yourself because when you say you're not going to do something it makes you feel like you're not allowed to do it and you feel like you're missing out. I don't know whether you're anything like me but I do get serious FOMO and if I put a restriction on myself in that way I feel like I'm being you know I feel miserable about it because I do get enjoyment out of going into shops and seeing something new and I have been learning over the past couple of years to say no if i don't need something just say no i don't need it i do struggle when it comes to winter time because i love a new jumper and you know i'm just like every other woman i do like to shop and buy myself a nice jumper or a nice pair of trousers or anything like that so having that little tiny small budget is nice and i'd never say that I would do a no spend because I would feel like I was restricting myself and that would make me feel resentful and probably want to buy everything. So rather than restrict myself, I'm going to say I've got £113.97. Let's see 
if by the end of November I have much left out of this budget. That will be cash in my wallet and I'm going to hold myself accountable and come back at the end of the month. And I would love it if you'd done the same and joined in with me and we can all encourage everybody else in the comments because it's it's coming up to the most stressful time of the year for everybody and I've been there, I've been in debt, I've stressed over Christmas and all of those things and I know how hard it can be to say no and how easy it can be to put something onto a credit card and you know worry about it when you have to worry about it so if we can just be a little bit more organized with our finances and support each other I think we'll do it I think we'll do pretty well I've got 113 pounds if I'm clever with how I spend that money and I keep a list of the things that I need when I go to home bargains or B&M stores I'm pretty confident that 113 pound like could last me a month. Now I've got everything else covered so I don't really need money for anything but I'm not going to restrict myself to the point of saying I'm not going to spend nothing because it would make me feel sad and I don't want to feel sad. If anything I want to try and save and be good with my money and hold myself accountable and go into 2023 feeling prosperous like I've said and happy and content and having my finances in order. So when it comes to a no spend month, let's call it a no extra spend month. So if you've got something on your list and you're going into home bargains, don't buy anything extra, buy exactly what you've got on your list and we'll all have a no extra spend month buying any unnecessary things. And you can guarantee we will s we won't spend anywhere near what we've got left out of our budgets. There are also a couple of challenges that I want us to set together. I used to do these years ago with Martin Lewis. I've always been really interested in saving and learning about how to organise my finances and I'd say back in 2010 I really became focused upon getting my finances in order and making sure that I was only spending what I could afford to spend and I used Martin Lewis, he was absolutely amazing and I joined the forum, the Money Saving Forum and we used to do challenges like save pennies in a in a, a jug for a year and then we'd tote them up and some years I'd, like, I'd have like £300 in this jar of pennies and then we'd done the, um, we called it the roadkill challenge where you found any money on the floor you'd pick it up and you'd save it and even that probably had about 45 pounds in at the end of the year and that was just money that i found be it at the bottom of a drawer or while i was out on a walk you know you're finding 2p or 10p pick it up and go roadkill put it in your little jug and save it and at the end of the year it all mounts up but I found that so motivating to do. I also set myself another challenge. You'll have heard me speaking about it in one of my previous videos. But if you're new around here and this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, and Tony, first of all, and if I switch my central heating on, since the price increase and the fear of putting the central heating on, I have now made the decision that I will only put the heating on if I have some spare money to put into a jar. I currently have £45 in that jar. I think I've had this, the central heating on five times and doing that I think I put like £10 in one time, £5 in, but I also set a timer with Alexa and I say Alexa set a timer for an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes and she will set the timer and let me know that the time's up and I have to switch the heating off but just by having that £45 in a jar well it's in a money wallet but just by having that money aside makes me feel a little better about putting the central heating on because then when the bill does come through it's not going to be as frightening because i know i've got that little extra bit of money to put towards the bill when it comes in so i think that is a great tip if you're trying to save a little bit of extra money there's also one as well where if you want to do a saving challenge depending on what the temperature is outside so let's just say it's 13 degrees if it's 13 degrees you have to put 13 pound that day into your savings that's another challenge that i used to do and you can really save i mean we're lucky in liverpool it never goes above 20 degrees so you know we're okay on the very rare occasion it does but they've been the occasions when i haven't been saving but that's another great way if you want to save for one month regardless of what the reason is for wanting to save. If for one month you say whatever the temperature is every single day for this month I'm going to save that in money, you'd be surprised how much you'd have at the end of it 
because you've saved every single day sometimes you could end up with 400 pounds in that month through saving for what the temperature is you just need to have a goal and whatever that goal is keep that in mind when you're putting your 10 pounds or your nine pounds or your four pounds if you're in Liverpool, our temperature really does drop. The next one is you can save £1,000 in three months by saving £84 per week. If we were to skip a few trips to Home Bargains or B&M, you can guarantee we would save £84 a week, no bother. But it's a great way of saving short term, but having a nice little chunk of money. So if you were starting off, that, that might be the type of challenge that you would do to just save for the three months do the 84, 84 pounds a week and you have something like, I think it's a thousand and eight pounds by the end of it. That's a great saving tip as well. The last challenge that I want to set everybody and I'm going to do it as well and that is the throw down money challenge. What we have to do is whatever money we save at the end of every single day, let's just say you were in Sainsbury's and you wanted to buy something for five pounds and you didn't buy it so you kept the five pounds and was like I'm not gonna buy that put it into your jar at the end of the day empty your pockets out whatever you didn't spend if you have a little daily budget like I do tend to have a little daily budget if you have a little daily budget put all your money in it at the end of the night and then at the end of the month I've set the challenge that we will all see at the end of November how much we saved in, our, in the throwdown challenge it's great fun it's a it's a great way to get you saving and motivated because we're all involved. We're all going to do it. We'll all save. I mean, I haven't got much of a budget. I've got £113.97, but I can still save all of that. If I was to be really, really clever, I could save all of that because there's nothing that I need. There's nothing that I need at all. And if I was to split that over the month, it's probably, it's probably not going to be much per day. But let's just see what we do because this isn't my final budget. But I'm going to use this as an example for this month and let's get to the end of November and see what everybody has got in their little throw down money challenge. I think it'll be great fun. I'm very competitive <laughs> but I haven't got much of a budget so we, we're just going to do our best. It's for a little bit of fun and let's just say that we will put that money away to buy a nice Christmas present for somebody this Christmas. It's a great little way to get things started, to start saving a little bit and make us a little bit more mindful about what we're spending. Let's go into 2023, hopefully with our finances in order, a little tiny bit of savings in our pockets and just having the best Christmas ever. I hope this budget video has given you a little tiny bit of inspiration. You don't need any fancy pants bits like I use, like a budget planner or, you know, highlighters or money wallets. You can use envelopes, they do exactly the same job. You can use a notepad, it does exactly the same jobs. Or you can use Google Spreadsheets, which is absolutely free. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know if you're going to be involved in our Throwdown Money Challenge. And I will see you all tomorrow.